Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel is Making with Marilyn. Now recently XJewel sent me this F1 laser to try out. I used blanks that they sent to me and it worked beautifully. Now one of the big benefits of this laser is it actually engraves on metal. So what I want to do is I want to gather up some things from my house. I'm going to get something out of my husband's garage and we're going to try it on things not purchased from XTool. Now before I get started, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing that. If you do, tap that bell, select the all notifications, that way YouTube lets you know anytime I upload new content. Now oftentimes on YouTube videos, you see people engraving on a paint covered metal, and we call that engraving on metal. But really, you're just scratching through the surface of the coating on the metal. So here's an example of that. I did do that in the up one. Another example is powder coated tumblers. So I made this on a different laser, but with this F1, you can actually truly engrave on metal. So here's one of the F1 blanks that I used. It's a fish and I put the word faith on that. And it is truly engraved onto the metal or into the metal. I can feel that. So the first thing that I did for this video is I went ahead and engraved on an expensive little knife that I got at Walmart. And you can see the word yummy there. So after doing that, here's what I settled on to try to engrave on. I have a little ice cream scoop. I have a sublimation keychain that I made for my husband. We're going to try to engrave on the back. I have a little cake lifter, or whatever you want to call that. I have a little USB thumb drive. It is metal. And then lastly, I stole from the garage my husband's staple gun. So I'm going to try to put Mr. Fix-It right there. Now none of these are going to be elaborate projects. I'm just going to use the Xtool software, type in some words, and then we're going to see how it works out. So the first thing that I'm going to start with is this ice cream scoop. And what I need to do is get the laser head to the right level, so I'm just turning the knob on the side until those two dots meet. Now that that's done, it's time to get into the software and make my design. So I'm going to click on text, and then you have to go right over here, cover back over hello, and type what you want. So I'm typing you scream ice cream, because you know we all scream for ice cream. Now this is too large, so I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. I won't know the right size until I do my framing. So I'm just going to try a few right here until I find one I like. And I actually like this one. I want to change it to engrave so I see really what it'll look like. I have IR selected. That gives me a power of 100 and a speed of 50. Now there's nothing down here that I really need to change. So it's time to fine tune my design. I'm going to go up here and change this to about two inches wide. and then it's time to frame it. Now there's a couple ways you can frame it. You can have a rectangle go around where the words are, or you can have the outline of the words. So I'm just moving this around. I frame again, I move it some more, frame again, and I'm gonna do that until I really like where it is. Once I do, it's time to hit process. I see it on the screen, and then right up in the top hand corner, you hit start. Once you do that, it lets you know that you need to press the button on the side of the F1, and then your engrave truly is going to start.
So the next thing that I tried was this little thumb drive and I decided to go ahead and turn it and I put the word Tim on it. So you can see me framing it and then I just go back to the software, change it a little on the screen, frame it again, and I do that until I'm happy with the placement. Now you can either change it on the screen or you can actually turn your blank as well. So now it's time for the spatula or the cake lifter or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to focus that laser head by using that knob on the side and then I'll use the same settings that I've been using on the other project. Now the next one that we're going to do is the back side of that sublimation keychain. Now it's not quite level, so let's see how this turns out. Once again, I'm turning the knob to get those two dots to line up, then I know the laser head's at the right level. Again, I'm going to use the power of 100, I'm using the infrared laser, and a speed of 50. Now when I frame this, I couldn't see the light on the back of this, so I had to use some cardstock to see it. So the last thing that I'm going to engrave today is that stapler. And of course, just like the other times, I have to turn that knob on the side of the X tool, get those dots to line up, and then I know it's going to focus well. So I go back to my software and I frame it. I make adjustments. And then I keep framing until I know it's in the right place. And then this time, instead of doing a full engrave, I'm just going to score it. What that means is you're basically engraving a little line around the outside of your design. Now, I didn't think that showed up very well, so I left the stapler in place, and I went back and I changed my setting to engrave. Now let's go ahead and take a minute to look at all these. Here's the knife that I did before I started the video. You can see that's a nice engrave. And on the other side I was experimenting with the Surmark spray. Now here's what it looks like. I just have a really small bottle of it, or a really small can of it. But this is usually used for marking metals. With other lasers you can use it to make it look like it actually engraved into it, but it's really just marking the metal. So the first one that we did was the You Scream Ice Cream. That turned out really nice. Now it took a little bit longer than I thought it would, but even at whatever it was, five minutes, that's not bad. That looks really nice. Then the second one I did was that USB drive. That turned out nice as well. Now the third one that I did is the one I'm least impressed with, and that was the back of this keychain. And obviously I didn't have it centered well, but this is the lightest engrave of all of them. And I really feel like there's some type of coating over this metal that it's not truly just bare metal. Maybe that's why it's not as good, but what this tells me is 
If you want to sell blanks that you engrave, before buying a ton of them and investing a lot of money, get one and make sure it works well. Now the next thing was this, and it's just a serving spatula for like casseroles or cake. I was really thrilled with the fact that this is not flat. There's a little divot in that. Same thing with this one. And it still did an excellent job. I'm really impressed with this engrave, actually. Just think of the wedding things. You could do cake servers. You could do cake cutters. There's a lot of things you could do with this. And then this last one, Mr. Fix-It, who doesn't know I did this yet. It turned out really nice. Now, remember, first we scored it. And I didn't think you could see it all that well with the scoring. So I left it in place. Then I went back and engraved it. And I love this. And this, I don't know if you can hear my fingernails. That is actually the deepest engrave we got today. Again, it probably has something to do with the type of metal. But this engrave is very, very nice. Not that you're going to engrave staplers, but it's nice. And I think it's kind of funny. Now, when I first showed this and I showed the IR, here's the metal blank that I used from Xtool. And if you compare that to this, they look very similar. Now, I would say this one is maybe a tiny bit deeper than this one. Actually, I'm not sure. Maybe it's just that it's a little larger. But this one is even much deeper than this one. So it's all going to depend on your material that you're using. Now, because this laser is one that uses mirrors instead of a laser head that moves, it doesn't do really large things. So before you would get this, you really need to think about what would I be making? Is this going to be useful in my business or my hobby? And if it is, it is really fast. And the software that Xtool uses is very, very user friendly. Now, if you're interested in an Xtool, whether it's this one or any other models, I do have a link below in my video description. For qualifying purchases, you would save some money, and then I would also get a referral fee. So if you're in the market for one of these X-Tools and you use that, thank you so much. Now on my next F1 video, I'm going to assemble the extension kit because you can make this where it does larger things, and then I'll use it for the first time. And as always, thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you on the next video.